Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Today's a continuation from the last video where we looked at the, uh, you know, we kind of looked at a test report of what Texas Instruments did to test their 1000 watt version of this guy, okay? And this one is, what is this one? The UCC, where is it? This is the UCC 28180 EVM, okay? So this guy, this guy's about 360 watts, okay? So that 1,000 watts is not quite three times this, but kind of, okay? So it has three times the capacitors, has two switching transistors, uh, two bridge rectifiers. We're going to jump into this uh, schematic review, and we're going to review their schematic. We're going to take a look at the schematic, okay? And, yeah, let's just jump in. Let's just do that. Go back and take a look at the other video before this one if you want to, uh, you know, get a little bit more background. I've got a playlist, a whole bunch of information about PFC converter design, and this is just another one, just giving you a good feel for the PFC converter. Active power factor correction. It's awesome. Puts your voltage and current in phase when you're taking it from the wall so that if you need, say, 500 watts or 1,000 watts, you're only pulling about 500,000 because the voltage and current are in phase. They're not out of phase like in a low frequency switcher. Now, in some switching power supplies, they don't have the PFC active power factor correction on the front end. They'll have a low frequency switcher, just charges up some big old caps, and then it uses a switching converter to uh, give your isolate output. So kind of like an LLC. Okay, so in, in our case, we're going to do two stages, we're going to end up getting boards made like this, okay, very similar to this, and a very similar circuit to this, and maybe, the, you know, there's a lot of unused space on this board because eval card, so we can make it a little bit smaller, and then it can power a card like this, at LLC, same thing, a lot of extra space on this, so we can kind of shrink the circuits down, okay, and Huh. No, we'll, we'll make, probably make different boards and have like some connections that we can connect them together. That way you can design and build your own circuits if you want. You can modify them like we have kind of shown in the scaling, how you can scale things. It's an easy way to design circuits to modify design. So anyway, let's jump into the schematic, okay? All right, guys. So here's the schematic. Looks a lot more... It looks a lot busier than our schematic, right? But let's just take a look at it. So we only had, we didn't have the EMI filter on ours, okay? On the other previous schematic. All this stuff is EMI. Let's zoom in on that. Let's just take a look at the EMI filter. Well, first of all, we have fuse, and then here's that MOV, okay? And then here's a discharge resistor. It says safety discharge. It just makes sure that when you unplug your power cord, that all these capacitors are discharged, so you don't, none of these X caps have any voltage on them, okay? And, or the Y caps in the series. Uh, then we have two Y caps before this COM mode choke going to chassis ground, just like this ground lug, you know, we have line neutral ground, right? Chassis. It goes directly to chassis like it should. Then our Y caps go to chassis, COM mode choke. You see the dots on the same side? And so then... The current goes to here, and we have another another differential capper X cap, 0.47, same as on the other side, same Y caps on this side, okay? It's tied to chassis again, and then another combo choke, which feeds the uh, bridge rectifiers, okay? But let's come over here and look at all this stuff on the bottom. All this stuff on the bottom is just a relay, okay? And all that does is, it just shorts out this 10 ohm resistor because that 10 ohm resistor, it's to slow down the inrush current because we're going to have a big amount of current coming through here, through the rectifiers and everything to the bulk capacitors on that. But I'll sh zoom out so we can see that. So see, that's going to go through this diode and it's also going to go through this diode and come through here through the choke, through that diode and charge up these bulk capacitors. So that's just a big old inrush of current. And so if we slow down 10 amps, basically let's say 120 volts. And if you're shorted with 10 ohms there, 
then you're going to get 12 amps. 230, you're going to get 23 amps. So that's a lot less than if this is milliohms, right? And it's on the return side just because it just makes it easier because you got a fuse up here. We're going to look at the layout. We're going to see how that makes it easier putting it down here. It just needs to be in the loop from line to neutral because that's where the current's flowing, right? Well, it's AC, it's going back and forth through line and neutral, but you know what I'm saying, if you make a loop, the current's going in the loop and the 10 ohms in the loop. So then after, let's see, how does this work? Looks like 15 volts comes in here, charges up a, a capacitor, and then goes through this coil right here, energizes it and pulls this down here where we short out the uh, resistor. And then when this thing turns off, uh, it's going to pump some current through this 12 volt zener back this way to the cap. So that'll take care of uh, keeping this, you know, this relay, this inductor here, uh, it'll give a path when it's turned on and turned off. Okay. So it looks kind of busy, but two combo chokes and some filtering. We're going to see how that's done on the layout. Now, again, up here, universal input, 90 volts to 264 volts AC. All right, so what we're going to see is a scaled model up. Okay, everything's going to be scaled up. Diodes are bigger. Well, hold on a second. We're going to make diodes big, but we're going to put them in parallel. So we have two bridge rectifiers in parallel, right? So the current comes in, goes this way, plus, goes this way, plus, comes out here. So we have parallel bridges, okay? Return comes this way, goes this way down to the bottom here through these sense resistors. And it also goes this way through the sense resistors. Or, you know, the other way to look at it is a positive current goes through the circuit, comes back through the sense resistors. Okay, so here's our current sense resistors. So look at that. Current sense, we're coming down here into the current sense. Okay. Here's our UCC 28180, same control chip that we're using. What else do we have here? Let's zoom out a little bit. There's a little more complexity going on here, right? But first of all, let's just look up here at our bridge rectifier, our inductor that we're used to seeing. Uh, this time it has a weird pin out. And I hate it when they do this. It's just laziness. They're just not showing it. It's probably two coils. Uh, in parallel, one coil has pins one and three, the next one has two and four, and they just don't show the coil here. I I, they sh I think they should draw, and I, and I also hate it when they have to put these things in numerical order like a mechanical thing. This electrical drawing it does not have to follow the mechanical footprint. It's just, it's a it's the art of electronics being lost, guys, and it sucks that uh, Texas Instruments is doing this. So we should show another inductor here, or if it's just a single wire with two pins to it, then show the pins. One, two here, and three, four here. Don't draw this nonsense. That's just nonsense, guys. Here's a heat sink. We're only assuming that the diodes are on it because we have seen the board. But it'd be nice to have a note here. And maybe this so I thing is supposed to, you're supposed to click on it. But why not just put a note here saying D100, D103 heat sink. Actually, this is for HV, so that's not even what that's about. This is just showing high voltage. So, yeah, there should be a note here uh, showing that this is uh, bridge diodes are tied to this. And, and the fact it's grounded here to this, I don't know if that makes sense either, guys. But anyway, um, it's just the way they did it. So this thing here is tied to electrically to this point here. So be careful touching that heat sink. All right, so as we go through the inductor, we come over to a transistor, turning it on and off, right? Pumping it up and down. But this time we have two. So everything's just scaled, two in parallel. They're big, nice FETs. And again, a heat sink just kind of planted on the drawing right here. So uh, for one thing, this does not need to be on the board. Well, since there's mounting points on the board, it should show the mounting holes, but it doesn't. It just shows this thing here, which shows it's to ground. So again, guys, this is bad uh, design practices to do this stuff. 
like one, two, three. What the hell does that mean? It should be mounting hole one, two, three or something and mounting hole one, two, three. Um, and it's tied to randomly just tied to ground symbol. Let me see the ground symbols over here. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, wow. We could have just tied that right here instead of making us go look to see what ground symbol that is. Um, over here on the left, they did it. They tied it here because it wasn't what they call ground. So they didn't know what to do. So they thought, oh, shoot, we got to just tie it to this reference point, which is ground is just a reference point, right? But laziness, instead of tying them to this line like this stuff, they just showed it that way, which I really don't like that because it's a global signal. It's supposed to make Spanish easier to read. So you don't have to draw maybe a line from here down to here. But when it's right there and you're emitting that connection that's just uh bad practice laziness loss of the art of electronics okay now here's a diode now this diode we didn't parallel up right all the currents flowing we paralleled the bridge rectifiers we i think we paralleled this or at least made it a big inductor we paralleled the switching transistors but yeah this guy is just one big old diode Maybe, you know, paralleling diodes, they don't always share, right? So it's a good idea to just get a big diode. So that's what they did. Now, uh, even if you try to match diodes, they don't share well. So, yeah. And this symbol here looks like a shock key. And for the part number, you know, I'm, I'm going to say that this is probably a silicon carbide uh, shock key diode. So... When the new kind of dial, so it has less voltage drop, it doesn't have any reverse current, so you don't have to worry about losing uh, power that way. And so one big dial on a heat sink is going to work. Okay, look at this, three 180 microfarad caps. So uh, higher power, you're going to double this up or since like if you're in our previous example, 300 watts, I think we had one of these. So now this is essentially three times as high. So there's three of them. So it's just scaled up, right? Uh, and then we have resistor to drain these caps when they're not connected. So that's why that, and you know, you don't want to choose too small of a resistor. It will discharge them faster, but then you have to have a power resistor. And so you just have to come up with a time the you know you can let this thing um discharge that's not going to take too much power so you don't need too big of a resistor okay so now let's come back over to the control thing where we saw these complexities here now it says do not place do not place so it looks like you place these transistors so that i think here's the thing guys um because we have two fets here and we have this chip down here this chip Maybe it's not designed to drive two big fats. So they're like, well, you know what? Just in case, let's put a driver here. If we need it, we'll put this driver in the circuit and we'll drive those things on and off. But you know what? Cheaper and easier. Hey, let's let's try to do just two transistors, totem pole, on off, on off. And you know, we'll just put this diode here just in case so we don't overdrive the transistors and it helps uh, turn them off faster if we need it. If we don't, we'll leave it off. And so that's kind of what they did. They got a one mic cap just to add a little bulk passage across here. And yeah, so that's what they're doing, guys. So now these global uh, ground things, this is where you would place them because otherwise you have to draw a line somewhere to go connect it somewhere. So that's the right place to put things, even for this one maybe. But what you could have done with this one is drawn it down here. And look at the, look how ridiculous this looks, guys. Look how ridiculous. Is this a fork? What is that? This is, you're getting used to seeing this kind of nuts. You know, but this is nuts, guys. This is supposed to also, you also want to show a quiet ground for this chip, this control chip. And then there's some power ground features, right? So normally what you'd want to do is you want to put, say, an analog ground or a quiet ground. So all these guys should be tied together. Even if you don't set physically separate it from your power ground, maybe VCC is tied to the power ground. Even if you don't do that, you, just showing them all tied together with one ground connection next to maybe the big capacitor 
uh, the low impedance capacitor where BCC maybe should be tied, then you would do that. And that way you show one ground plane. But regardless, you, this is a global signal. It's supposed to make things simpler, easier to read so you don't have to draw lines everywhere. Guys, one single line gets rid of all those stupid diamonds and makes, I mean, all those stupid arrows that make it look like you're trying to draw a fork. Like, what the heck? This is, again, loss of our electronics, laziness, uh, just not knowing, and just making schematics look stupid. Remember, especially in power, the return is just as important as the power going out. So drawing the return here properly, showing these are all tied together with one you know, ground connection to this, and then one trace to that connected to this, maybe like a zero ohm resistor, maybe tied from here to the power ground, something like that. So you can put this on a nice old ground plane underneath the chip, you know, just doing uh, good design. This is a sense value, right? You're coming down here to sense this, this is a sense point here, and this should be shown like it's a nice quiet spot, but instead. Yeah, it's, and okay, so now we're looking at this diode here. This diode could be a shocky diode even. It's going to sense, right? And that's so that you don't get anything, um, you know, so this point here never becomes more positive than, say, a diode drop above the sense line, okay? So it just helps clamp that sense line down. And, you know, you have 0 0.033, ohm resistors 33 milliohms three of them so you really need like 11 milliohms and then this 221 and this 680 uh picofarad as your rc your current sense come in here and this guy here's just sitting there as a clamp okay um but yeah this is just bad circuit practice uh you schematic don't draw your schematics like that guys that's just it looks dumb okay so, uh, and also this ground over here, by the way, on the left, this this thing here, instead of going up, over, down, and uh, ground thing, come on, guys, just draw the line straight over, come over, connect to this ground, and show that the 18, you know, this voltage here comes here and in here. So it enters this, it powers this circuit from here and here, not here and Oh, well, just, you know, ground plane, uh, you know, whatever. We don't care the path that these things take. So, signal integrity, you try to worry about everything. If you're going to put, even if you put a ground plane, you know physically where things are placed. And when you draw things a certain way, you're going to place things physically a certain way. When you just draw things like this, it's like, oh, these can be scattered anywhere and just, oh, tied to these pins and ground plane. But no, you want this stuff to be nice and tight. You want this area here to be a nice, quiet township. You know, nice, quiet ground plane. Nice, quiet streets. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's it's sad to see even Texas Instruments fall into these bad practices. And, by the way, so just continuing on with my picky streak here. Uh, back in the day when I would design chips and put them on, you know, in CAD, you don't go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, that's the way the chips laid out. Again, just like the inductor up here. Again, this is a schematic. This is supposed to make it easy to read, a symbol. It's a symbol for the part. It's not a mechanical representation of the part. I, I wish people would stop doing that, but it's laziness. And I think it's also just not knowing. People just don't know. They get, uh, you know, interns in college and they say, hey, go make me a chip. And then he follows what the last intern did or whatever. And they all do it wrong. And none of the senior engineers explain the art of electronics and how to make things look good and, and look proper and make it easy to read. Okay. So here's the thing. Here's what I would do. If I was doing this thing, I would put the ground, pin one, down here at the bottom of the chip, okay? And if you want to put them left and right, but I would put them right along the bottom. Just put it right here so it comes right down here, connects to my ground. And also VCC. 
if I had my ground here, I'd put the VCC up on top of the chip, just showing, hey, there's VCC comes in, and drops down, or you draw VCC and ground here on the on one corner or something, and that way you can put the capacitor between VCC and ground and show, hey, this is this this matters, you know, this is these things are connected together, and then vSense. Um, this is the feedback voltage, okay? And you have this network here, okay? You have a voltage divider here, and then you have a capacitor being your feeding your vSense. Okay, and then you have a compensation. So those things kind of belong together. So that's that's good that those things are actually placed together. Uh, these things, again, these guys should all be tied together. You know, it's ridiculous or not. Even if you wanted to show functionality, you could tie C118 and C123, show one ground for those two things. You could tie these three things and show one ground over here on C19, show those things are tied together. You could show functionality like frequency, tie that to ground, you know, um, I comp. So I comp, you could put that underneath I sense so it doesn't have to cross over. You could put it down here uh, where pin three is and have I comp coming straight down to ground. And then have I sense coming up here in the top, you know, where it comes down, drops in. So you can have the ground pin down here at the bottom corner. Like I said, bottom corner here, VCC, bottom corner on this side or something like that. And show the capacitor between them. You can draw, you could draw this symbol so that it's easy to read versus uh, this numbskull way of going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is the way the chip's laid out. This way I'm putting the chip down. Because I'm a redneck. For, no, I'm not making fun of rednecks. I know rednecks are smart guys. <laughs> All right. So anyway, yeah, just make it fun. You know, this is crazy to do it this way. It's just, I think it's lazy. You don't have to think. You can just uh, put down a, a square, put eight pins down just the way the chip is, and just label them and let the schematic guy figure out how to lay out a schematic. And it should be the schematic drives the symbol. Anyway, over here on the left, U102, same kind of thing, kind of. Um, you got B plus coming in here, you know, BDD ground. So you see how these things make kind of sense, right? But why not switch pin four and pin three around? So then pin three just comes off the top, you know, feedback pin straight in like that. And then that way you could have your VDD and grounds together, you know. Um, yeah. And then also the drain up here by HVN and the no connect down here in the bottom left where you don't care. Instead of in between them where you have to look at it, you know. Um, and then look at this, guys. This is amazing. <laughs> Holy shit. I can't believe the same guy drew the schematic. You know what? I think what he did again laziness somebody did this one more correct and they and whoever made this schematic copied this from that circuit and put it down and this person actually knew dc dc converters and he actually tied the input cap return to the circuit and showed the power coming in holy crap guys there's an example of what i was saying the way this thing up here k100 should be drawn and that's the way you know, U101 should be drawn more like this. This is the way you do it. Oh, look, I actually know how my power comes in and out of this chip. It comes in here and it comes out here. Wow. So you either draw your output return and see this return symbol right here to make this, to, to make it look even better to sell the story that I'm trying to tell you better is put that ground symbol over here underneath this capacitor. So now your input cap here, you see B plus and return coming into this converter and the output of the converter is labeled ground and 15 volt. It should be 15 volt return. We should stop calling just everything ground. You know, it should be 15 volt return use a zero ohm resistor somehow to connect it to uh, the 390 volt return up here. That way you know when you route this and stuff, if you do a ground plane, fine, but think about it before you do it. And then you can always remove the zero ohm resistors, but it makes the layout 
cleaner and makes the understanding of the connections better when people understand the flow of the circuits. Usually, what? Left to right, input to output, top to bottom, right? That's the way we look at schematics, conventional current flow, right? So anyway, there I am. Been picky, but I just want to analyze this circuit, kind of show you the difference of scaling a bigger circuit and how to do it, okay? Let's go look at the placement. All right, guys, so what do you think? Um, yeah, spend a little extra time when you do a schematic, when you do your, you know, make a little art out of your work. Basically, you know, what I think is when you do a nice job, it's a piece of art, right? When there's some stink on it, it's hard to call it art. <laughs> anyway, hey, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, two big thumbs up to my patrons and my YouTube members and Danny for being a team member. Thanks so much. And for you guys that have hit that thank you button, thanks so much. You bought me a beer, bought me a cup of coffee. I really appreciate that. And yeah, it goes a long ways. Thanks, guys. Um, nice to hear your comments. Um, become a subscriber if you haven't done so. Look at the playlist on these PFC converters. We're going to move forward. We're going to get some boards made. I think I've picked out a board house. So it's kind of between two right now. But anyway, very soon we're going to be doing that. I'm going to go through some Gerber files here. Uh, coming up, but first we're going to look at the PCB design and I'm going to review that and kind of give you my thoughts and feelings about that. And so when we do our own, you'll kind of see where I'm coming from. Okay. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.